The sun is at its midday peak, and this small herd of buffalo, also known as the American bison, grazes in the pasture. The Crow Nation Fish and Game Department rounded up this group from a larger herd in the Bighorn Mountains. The ones behind us, uh, these we took these down uh, last September from the herd in the mountain, and the intent is to um, sell them and process the meat and kind of generate revenue off of uh, the meat. It's kind of a little bit higher than beef around here. We got about 2,000 head up in the Bighorn Mountains. Uh, tribal members can hunt them for free. Uh, they use it for feeds, for cultural reasons. Uh, maybe they need a robe for some. Uh, there's different various aspects in our culture you can use them for. And uh, we also sell hunts. Um, we sell about maybe 20 to 30 hunts a year to generate revenue for the fishing game. Uh, and we actually promote that. It's actually a pretty good deal. So we, we maintain the herd, we guide them, and then we, we also enforce the game codes on the reservation. So. Well, we got about 20 guys on staff. Uh, we cover 2.2 million acres, uh, the entire reservation. We got to be out there every day, year round. Uh, we got people hunting. There's, there's no seasons for the crows. At one time, the bison numbered in the millions across the plains and were hunted nearly to extinction. Today, even though herd numbers are smaller, the significance of the bison to the Absaluki, or the Crow Nation, is as great as it was hundreds or even thousands of years ago. At one point, uh, it was kind of meant everything to the crow. I mean, we got all our clothing and uh, teepees and food and uh, followed the herds uh, with the horses and uh, they kind of meant everything and uh, a lot of tribes were the same way but uh, in the modern era I guess uh, they've lost touch with the buffalo, the bison and uh, we still kind of have a, a good grip with uh, with the bison. Back in the day they you know, if they were in the hundreds of millions, if we sat here and we we're on a herd right now, it, was, it would probably stretch uh, as, as far as you can see. And they would just, when they roll through, they just plow up the ground and they just leave a big old path. And it's just, I mean, I, I can't even imagine that, the, what the way to describe how many buffalo there was on the plains back in the day. I learned about the buffalo maybe as a kid. My uncles used to, used to go and take one every year and they'd bring me along and we'd, you know, we'd go on the hunt and we just kind of, I guess, took it for granted that it was kind of a normal thing. You don't realize until you start growing up that not everyone gets to uh, experience what we experience here. And it, again, it kind of makes you proud to be part of the Crow tribe. There's a connection, not only with, with myself, I see it with tribal members. Uh, they don't usually come out and hunt it a lot, but when they do, they kind of feel a connection and they kind of a sense of pride that we can still do do what we did you know 100 years ago and still keep our ways and the crow nation game and fish department do harvest the bison for ceremonial purposes the department also oversees other game management practices ensuring the natural resources such as the bison are there for future generations last week uh, they wanted uh, two buffalo taken for a feed uh, and they wanted it done with a bow uh, because if we used a rifle, they would just break through the fence. And it's a little little different here on the mountain. You got timber and brush and, and stuff to take cover and sneak up on them, but we kind of had to, um, they seen us coming. So it was kind of a standoff and it was really stressful. And uh, we had someone with a bow and we had two backup shooters just in case. And they were pretty angry. It's, I mean, they're as wild as can be. You can't approach them, they'll charge you. It's pretty dangerous. We also do enforcement, uh, obviously. We gotta enforce the game code. People like to violate the law, they like to take shortcuts. And we also have a little focus on conservation. Uh, this year we just started a huge conservation effort. We're mapping all the sage grouse. I guess they're trying to uh, put them on the endangered species list. So we're trying to locate all the, the breeding sites and nesting grounds. We documented that and we also uh, we're actually starting another program with the black-footed ferret 
uh, and they uh, they live off prairie dogs, and they're pretty much uh, wiped out around here. It's pretty much extinct in the wild. So uh, in September, I think we're going to get 30. And we got a place uh, a little west of here where we're going to introduce them and try to maintain them, and hopefully they uh, take a foothold and come back. So sometimes I'm stuck in the office, and it's uh, it gets a little boring, but just being in the mountains, uh, especially the bighorns, there's like a certain smell like in July, like the, the green and the, the plants and stuff up there. You kind of, when it's a long winter, you, you miss that stuff. And I just like being outdoors. I like to take my kids along and show them, you know, what they showed me and stuff. You know, pass it along and keep it alive.